Jeffrey Hollander is CEO and chief inspired protagonist at the American Sustainable Business Council. He also was a co-founder and former CEO of Seventh Generation, which he built into a leading natural product brand known for its authenticity, transparency, and progressive business practices. Good morning, Jeffrey. And well, actually, it's, a, it's good afternoon now where I am and uh, welcome to the summit. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. I'm uh, speaking to you from beautiful northern Vermont, where it is a chilly fall day, and we're sort of at the tail end of the uh, turning of the leaves, but it's spectacular and beautiful out. So I'm going to speak to you about creating an economic system that works for all, moving from incremental to structural change. The COVID-19 crisis, together with the outrage about ongoing racism in America, has revealed what many of us have always known. Our current system of capitalism does not work for most Americans. As Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Stephen Perlstein recently wrote, our economic system is run off the moral rails, affecting our sense of fairness, eroding our sense of community, poisoning our politics, and rewarding values that easily degenerate into greed and indifference. This dysfunction was recognized in a recent Just Capital Harris poll, where 75% of all Americans believe our current form of capitalism doesn't ensure the greater good of society, and only 29% of Americans believe it produces the kind of society they want for the next generation. In December 2019, the American Sustainable Business Council, which is a 10-year-old public policy organization that represents hundreds of businesses on progressive public policy issues, launched its work on creating an economic system that works for all at a Washington, D.C. Senate. And in March 2020, ASBC launched its multi-stakeholder working group to identify the critical and important business related policies that are required to make this change. While capitalism remains a very dynamic force, challenges such as income inequality, crumbling infrastructure, market consolidation and monopolies, and of course, climate change, as well as underinvestment and the financialization of our economy, pose very serious risks to our current global leadership, and even, I believe, our social stability. Many across the country view our current capitalist system as rigged and not working for them. In recent history, corporate management has focused on maximizing value for themselves and their shareholders, but a growing chorus of financial experts argue that this narrow focus has become at great cost to customers, employers, suppliers, communities, the environment, who have a large stake in our economy. If our economy is to work for all, then business leaders have to implement ways to simultaneously address the priorities of all stakeholders, not just management and shareholders. The limited progress that has been made in response to these challenges over the last three to four decades has been insufficient to the scale of the crises we now face. In August 2019, the CEO members of the Business Roundtable, representing 181 of the largest global corporations, announced their support for a new modern standard for business by committing to lead their companies for the benefit of all stakeholders, customers, employees, suppliers, communities, and shareholders. However, with this initiative barely off the ground, on April 13, 2020, the New York Times declared big business pledged gentle capital, gentler capitalism, but it's not happening, happening in a pandemic. The CEOs who signed the celebrated Business Roundtable document have, for example, continued to pay out dividends to their shareholders, pay themselves extravagant salaries and bonuses, instead of protecting workers' jobs, jobs that are now rapidly disappearing 
new furloughs and layoffs. To succeed, this transition that we must make will require many changes. From instituting broad public policy that prevents this obsession with shareholder returns to clear and measurable goals that evaluate the treatment of these other stakeholders. These together with changes in the culture compensation ownership based on serving the needs of all stakeholders are required to change a system that has permeated the operation of our nation's business. This is our task and this is our challenge and it is urgent now more so than ever. The document we produced, which you can download from the American Sustainable Business website, all 101 pages of it, results from a commitment to approach the challenges we face and the solutions we propose from a systems perspective. The challenges we face have been designed into our system of government by and large over the last 30 to 40 years. These challenges are interrelated and interconnected. You can't solve climate change, in our opinion, without dealing with environmental justice. You can't solve environmental justice without addressing healthcare for all. And you can't solve our healthcare challenges without addressing the impact of hundreds of millions of dollars that have been spent by the pharmaceutical industry to influence public policy. The approach of systems thinking is fundamentally different from most traditional forms of analysis. Traditional analysis focuses on separating individual pieces from what is being studied. In fact, the word analysis actually comes from the root meaning to break into constituent parts. Systems thinking, which we employ in our report, in contrast, focuses on how the thing being studied interacts with other constituents of the system, a, a set of elements that interact to produce behavior of which it is a part. This means that instead of isolating smaller and smaller parts of the system being studied, system thinking works by expanding its view to take into account larger and larger numbers of interactions, an issue which is being studied. This results in strikingly different conclusions than those generated by traditional forms of analysis, especially when what is being studied is as dynamic and complex as our economy and our businesses practices. Let me highlight just a few of the public policy recommendations that are in our report. These public policy recommendations are not what you typically hear from a business organization. We have in America gotten used to hearing typical business voices as, as is known from the words of the US Chamber of Commerce and other trade associations. We don't believe that there is a conflict between things like a healthy economy, business profits and a safe environment. We have to find a way to integrate all those things together, and that will require robust changes in our public policy that are critical to make this transition. So some of the highlights of the report include things like reparation for African Americans as well as Native Americans, as has been recommended by Black Lives Matter. Critical issue is much more diversity on corporate boards we must have women and minorities serving on these boards as has been mandated by the state of California. And this also includes worker representation on corporate boards, especially of public companies. This representation of a more diverse group of people will improve stakeholder accountability, financial performance, as has been documented well by Swiss Ray that studied the performance of 2000 public companies and found that just the presence of a single woman dramatically increased the financial performance of the company. This will challenge corporate cultures of most publicly held companies. We also need to adopt something called full cost accounting to bring an end to the current accounting rules that encourage business 
to externalize their adverse impacts onto society and the environment. Yesterday at the American Sustainable Business Council, we held a webinar on revolutionizing accounting. And we were lucky to have a professor from the Harvard Business School talk about the work that he has done to capture these externalized impacts on society and the environment. Some of his findings are if you capture these external impacts that don't show up on financial statements, ExxonMobil, for example, would have to pay an extra $100 billion a year to cover the negative impacts they have on things like climate change. We also believe in a wealth tax as advocated by the renowned economist, uh, Thomas Piketty. We also believe we need a progressive consumption tax as is the case throughout most of the EU. Very importantly, we must establish better corporate accounting, corporate governance and fiduciary responsibility that represents all stakeholders, not just shareholders. Through supply chain reporting, transparency, fiscal responsibility for these externalized costs and a living, not a minimum wage. B Lab and B Corp have been on the forefront of this issue and have also produced a wonderful report that you should check out on improving corporate governance and fiduciary responsibility. We also need to ensure equal access to capital for people of color, women, and underserved populations who presently lack a seat at the table. If you look at where venture capital goes, for example, and you look at black women as one part of our society, you'll see that less than two or 3% of all venture capital is invested with them. We also have to address the tax system inequities, accounting rules, investment regulations, particularly those investment regulations that hide and concentrate wealth. Some of these things include changing the way capital gains work to, to encourage truly long-term investments. We do not think that giving a significant tax break after 12 months, which is now considered a long-term investment, makes sense. We also don't think that the taxes that are applied to short-term, particularly for day traders and people who are in the market and out of the market within a day or a week or a month, they should get much steeper penalties in, in the form of taxes for those short-term investments. We also think we should remove the cap on social security payments. People making $133,000 a year no longer have to pay social security taxes on income over that threshold. And we also think that we should eliminate mortgage deductions for the 1% that are making over $500,000 a year. Few more recommendations and then I look forward to taking your questions. We also think that we need to explore a federal corporate tax charter that ensures companies can't hide assets and avoid taxes. We need to ensure worker workforce well-being through education, employee ownership, support of labor unions, disability insurance, universal income, and paid leave. Two final thoughts. We need to take the money out of our political system. It is corroding and destroying our democracy and our elected leaders work for the people who put money into PACs and give tens of millions of dollars into elections rather than the public who they are, should be there to represent. And lastly, and of course, critically important, we need to deal with protecting our environment. We need to green our infrastructure. We need to build a circular economy. We need to engineer a zero carbon energy. We need to, as you've heard today, support regenerative agriculture system. And of course, we must must, must critically put a price on carbon. So thank you. Uh, I know that was a lot to digest in a short amount of time, but I hope it will stir some questions and perhaps even some controversy. Paul? Yeah, thanks very much, Jeffrey. And um, a, a question that's, that's come across is, we have a very complex financial system 
for working out all of these issues at the same time that we are dealing with the, the, the most significant natural world crisis in, in the history of mankind. Uh, just within the financial markets, the, there's a, a lot of difficulty getting people to agree on systems for, for measuring and managing these, these issues. Uh, how do you, how do you, how do you uh, um, propose that we step outside of just that financial and economic system to create more opportunities for management across all of these, uh, these categories of issues that we're dealing with. Yeah. Well, I think the major challenge facing us is that we as a nation and a country and citizens have ceded the influence over our public policy to big business. And over the last 30 to 40 years, large multinational companies have pretty much written their own rules for things like financial management and fiduciary responsibility. There is no way we're gonna bring about this change other than to get involved and be advocates for these new and critical public policies. We have to change the rules of the game. We're in a very, very challenging situation. We have a very complicated system as you've suggested. It's hard for people to understand. It's hard for people to navigate through. We've got to educate ourselves. We've got to step up and particularly progressive responsible businesses, particularly small and medium sized companies need to get involved and not let the large multinational companies do things that honestly small and medium sized companies can't do. When you look at the way some large companies avoid paying taxes by hiding money in Ireland or Belgium, if you're a hardware store or a small, medium-sized company, there's no way you can afford to do that. We have to stop these large companies from taking advantage of these tax loopholes. Okay. Now, Richard, one, I'm sorry, Jeffrey, one of the things that uh, we often hear uh, about where job creation happens in our economy is, is in these small and medium-sized companies. They create the majority of the new jobs. How do we distribute the, the access to, to the resources that you've been describing uh, across these smaller companies uh, in order to give them more benefit to an opportunity to grow into the medium size and large companies that we end up with? Yeah, it's a huge challenge as someone who started six companies and has spent my life raising money. Capital is really hard to come by, especially for minorities who are starting businesses. And in order to stimulate our economy, we have to provide more capital through organizations like the SBA to these small companies. Even when you look at the way the bailout has functioned, we see huge amounts of money going to very, very large companies that really don't need all of the money. You know, Harvard University getting a $10 million PPP grant when they've got billions and billions of dollars uh, already under management. So we have to change the way capital is allocated. We need to really build the infrastructure around impact investing. We need more capital in that system. And we need to require the SBA to lend money in a much more diverse fashion than they do today. Great. All right, any parting comments? Jeffrey, thank you for your time today. You've got about 20 seconds. <laughs> no, please go to the ASBC website and download the report, Creating an Economic System That Works for All. You'll find all of these policy recommendations and then get involved with us. Help work with us to change public policy to make sure that we create a future for our children and our planet. And thanks, Paul, for having me today. It was a pleasure to be here. Thanks a lot, Jeffrey Hollander. Mm -hmm.